Hello there, my name is Willem and today we are going to talk about porn. Again. You might be wondering why are we having another NoFap video. The simple reason is that I made some mistakes in my previous video and I don't want to tell you guys lies or fake news. So I decided to make a new video and to upload it and I deleted the old one. And if you don't want to watch another NoFap video, don't worry. I will be uploading a video on how to deal with social anxiety this Saturday. That being said, let's get started. Welcome to Brains Applied. And the first question that we're going to answer is, is porn addictive? The most important thing that you should know about porn and porn addiction is that those are pretty controversial subjects within the field of psychology. And there are two main groups that have different claims about porn addiction. The first group is Nicole Pross and her colleagues. And she claims that porn addiction is not a thing. She says that those people are merely hypersexual. In the same way that some people have ADHD, the Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. She says that those people are just hypersexual. They th just think about sex more often in the same way that some people are hyperactive. That is the way they are. On the other hand, there is Gary Wilson and his colleagues. And Gary Wilson is the founder of Your Brain on Porn. And they claim that porn addiction is a thing and they claim to have a lot of evidence for it. But so does Nicole Pross. So who exactly is right? The thing that you should know is that Nicole Pross and Gary Wilson seem to be in a pretty fierce and unprofessional fight. So they will never ever ever admit being wrong to the other person. They're like water and fire or the Democrats and the Republicans. So I decided that we should look at what third parties say. The first organization that we are looking at is the World Health Organization. And they have included compulsive sexual behavior disorder into their 11th edition of the International Classification of Diseases Manual. The definition states that compulsive sexual behavior disorder is characterized by a persistent pattern of failure to control intense repetitive sexual impulses or urges resulting in repetitive sexual behavior. But this is a rather vague definition and can be both hypersexuality and porn addiction. So we have to look at another organization, the American Psychology Association. The APA has considered to add hypersexuality and a pornography subtype into their fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. However, they didn't do so due to a lack of evidence to support it. So in the end, who exactly is right? I have taken a look at review papers. Review papers are papers that just grab a bunch of studies with a similar subject together and they try to draw any conclusions from them. And those papers often agreed with the APA. One of the major problems for porn addiction is that the researchers are still arguing about the definition of porn addiction and how to measure it. And of course, if you want to decide whether porn addiction is really a thing, you should have some union in what it exactly is and how it is measured. Additionally, there is the issue that there is not enough research yet. We need to know more details. A lot of the research on porn addiction is actually based on research on internet addiction and also on gambling addiction and video game addiction and those kind of things. And although they might be kind of similar, there still is quite a significant difference. So we need more evidence. The third issue is that we need a lot of objective evidence. For example, we have to look at the differences in brain activity between porn addicts and non-porn addicts while they are watching porn. And this is kind of an issue because a lot of these studies that actually do measure brain activity, they have a really small sample of participants. And this is bad because of the very simple reason that the smaller your sample is, the more chances there are that your findings are just purely coincidental and purely luck or purely random. To make sure that there really is an effect, you need big sample sizes. 
and I'm talking about thousands or ten thousands of participants here. And then there is the fact that a lot of these studies look at young men. And this is not per se an issue. However, if you want to make a major decision, for example, about the existence of porn addiction, then you need a representative sample of your population. And young men is not a representative sample. You also need women. You also need skinny people, fat people, beautiful people, ugly people, black people, white people, Asian people. You need a lot of different people and a representative sample. And that is very important. And that is something that is kind of lacking. This also happens because a lot of studies use convenience samples. Convenience samples are samples of participants that were very easy to access. And as most research is being done on the university, this often means students. You might have seen this at your university or your college when your professor asks you to participate in an experiment or to fill in a survey. It's an easy way for them to get data but it is not representative. So yeah, in the end we will probably be able to conclude that there is something like a compulsive sexual behavior disorder or something like porn addiction. However, we need more evidence and until that time I would say don't take the entire porn addiction thing too serious. Remember that scientists still have a lot to figure out. Question number two, does porn fuck up your relationship? A fairly recent study found that people who started watching porn during their marriage were more likely to divorce. And they also found that people who stopped watching porn during their marriage were less likely to divorce. So can we conclude that porn fucks up your relationship? No. The author of the paper simply stated that there was no evidence that porn causes a bad relationship or the other way around. It's the story of the chicken and the egg. Compare it to having a mistress. If you start having an affair, is it because of the fact that your relationship sucks? Or does your relationship suck because you have an affair? I mean, if everything is perfectly fine and everything goes great with your wife, why would you even consider a second option? So, no. We cannot conclude that porn messes up your relationship. You might as well start watching porn because your relationship is already in a pretty bad shape. Question number three. Does porn cause erectile dysfunction? Once again, some studies say yes, other studies say no. And even if it is the case, there is absolutely no conclusion on why exactly it might happen. It might be because porn is some hard track that messes up your brain. It might also be because you masturbate too much and that simply desensitizes your penis. Or it might be because, as I mentioned before, your relationship is not going that well and you don't like your wife anymore. It might also be because a major part of the NoFap community is in fact barely 18. And porn probably gives these virgins quite high expectations of what sex will be like. That will be a real disappointment the first time they have sex. But it might also be because they are very pressured and stressed to perform really well the first time they have sex. Because they want to be like the handsome, muscular, big carotid guys that they see in the movies. But maybe it is because of the chemtrials that the government is spreading in the air. But we won't find out until we have more research. Question number four, does not watching porn give you more testosterone? This is one of the major claims of the NoFap community. And yes, it is true, not masturbating will give you more testosterone. However, there is no evidence that this will give you more energy or that this will improve your physical performance. Studies have actually shown that having sex the day before a physical workout has absolutely no effect on your performance. Unless, of course, you're having sex all night long and then you're just tired the day after, obviously. And there are no studies at all that investigate the effect of masturbation on your performance physically. So there is no evidence of that claim. And having more testosterone will not make you more attractive and it will not make you more like an alpha male. 
Testosterone is not some magical potion that will change all of your life. What might be the case is that people who actually don't masturbate compulsively just go out more often and they just spend more time with their friends, more time talking to girls, they build their social skills and they build confidence. And that is what they do, they exercise, they socialize and they make their own lives better. And that is exactly what is happening. If you're shy or lonely or depressed, porn is a good way to run away from your problems because the dopamine temporarily makes you more happy. But it will not solve your problems at all. In fact, porn is just a symptom of having a bad life, but it's definitely not the cause. The takeaway of this video is that porn and porn addiction are topics that have been popularized by media and by social media and by many YouTubers. But you have to take everything that they say with a grain of salt because a lot of these effects have not been proven and the topic is still highly controversial amongst scientists. And that is just all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, press the like button and of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. And I will see you guys later.